By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are back once again in Vienna. We are at Vienna Geddon and I mean... We have reached the quarterfinals, the top eight. The gloves are off. Although I have to say at this tournament, there were a lot of like serious spiky decks. And of course that trend is gonna continue here in the quarterfinals. We've got Oliver who is playing robots. And I mean, serious robots. This is a strong deck. He's playing mainly artifacts, blue, a little bit of red, a little bit of black, but more about that of course later in the video in the deck decks. And he's taking on Alex and Alex is playing uh, troll Disco. We've seen a few Troll Disco decks already and what I love about his Troll Disco deck is he's hidden a Sheevan Dragon in there. I appreciate that Alex. I love that. I like that. Hopefully we get to see you uh, hit that card on the table and besides uh, the Set Trolls and that one Sheevan Dragon and of course an Neural Discs. He's also playing with Blue. He's playing with Red Burn. It's looking like a very competitive deck so I really understand why both of these decks have made it here to the quarterfinals of Vienna Geddon. Now before I continue with the deck decks I've got lovely deck photos of both of these decks. First a quick message from the sponsor of this video. 3 for 1 Trading is one of Europe's leading Magic the Gathering retailers. Their online shop has a fantastic selection of high-end Magic cards, especially for vintage, legacy and, yes, yes, old school Magic players. They now exclusively offer my community free, fully insured and fast worldwide shipping on all their high-end singles, full sets and out-of-print sealed products. They upload new cards every Wednesday and have weekly sale offers and reductions waiting just for you. Use my code TIMMY to get free worldwide shipping on your first order over $500 or euros. Have fun ordering those cards and thank you 341 Trading for sponsoring this video. And we are back and ready to jump into the deck decks. I'm gonna start with the deck of the player on the left, that is Oliver. Let's take a look at his Robots Brew. And here we see the deck of Oliver. So, I mean, this is really your Robots deck, right? It's uh, It's... In a way, it's kind of standard, but it's always interesting to see when people play like such a like famous deck, I guess, right? Because it's really one of the tier one decks in old school to kind of see, okay, how do you play it? What choices have you made? So if we're looking at this, the first thing I notice is what a beautiful collection. It's all black bordered. So <laughs> that is really sweet, Oliver. Um, and then we're seeing four uh, Triskelions, four Suchis. We're seeing four copy artifacts. I mean, so far... That makes complete sense. And then he's kind of shaving, right? Because we're seeing that he's playing with two counter spells. Um, I'm pretty sure I can't really see it right now, but I'm sure a mana drain is in there somewhere. Um, but because you're kind of shaving on your counter magic, you have more uh, space for other cards. So for example, he's gone for three psionic blasts and he's playing a Dance of Many. Now I've seen Dance of Many before in other brews as well. And it's, it's quite interesting because the Dance of Many can make a copy of your Trike or Suchi also for two mana, which is the same casting cost as of course your copy artifact. And yes, you have the upkeep cost you have to pay, which can be a nuisance. But on the other hand, sometimes that two blue mana can mean, you know, it's a bolt because you copy a Trike, you can take the counter self straight away and maybe those three damage can give you the victory. Or, you know, maybe you're later in the game and those two extra blue mana, they don't really matter. But the, the key here is that the starting casting cost of this card is just two mana, just like a copy artifact. So it's like you're playing with five copy artifacts, which is, you know, quite good because copy artifact itself, that's an insane card. A nice thing, by the way, to note about the copy artifact that I uh, I discovered in my in my years of playing old school is that when you cast it, it's a blue card, but as soon as it hits the battlefield and you target the artifact, it actually becomes colorless because the artifact is colorless as well. So that means that you cannot play a red elemental blast on it anymore when it has kind of resolved and hit the table. You can use your red elemental blast to counter the copy artifact, but you cannot destroy the copy artifact once it's on the table. So that's kind of a nice little side note. Um, and then when we're looking at the other cards, he is playing with three black cards of course demonic tutor mind twist right yeah you know um and then he's also playing with anime death so one anime death in there as well so i i, I like those one-offs in decks you know i like the dance of many i like the anime death that kind of makes it interesting he's also playing with two shatters main and only with two bolts so i, I can imagine it it must be tempting to go for a full playset of bolts and maybe only for one psionic blast but he's gone for three psionic blasts 
and two bolts. Now, of course, the Psionic Blast, also an instant, a little bit more expensive to cast than the bolt, but it deals four damage. So it can take care of those Sarah Angels that we've seen so much at uh, this tournament. So I kind of understand uh, this decision. And then, of course, in the sideboard, we see the Abyss. The Abyss, a card that you used to see a lot main, actually, in these robot decks because there's just so much synergy. But in this case, they went in the sideboard. Another card in the sideboard is Sydney in a Bottle. There's another one card that can have uh, a huge impact. And then we also see some Red Elemental Blast and just, you know, some, some choices you would uh, you can expect. Of course, some Blood Moons. Blood Moon, of course, is great if you yourself have that uh, that uh, artifact strategy because it's easy to cast artifacts although when we're looking at the mana base only playing with two basic islands so a blood moon can kind of wreck him as well but of course when you are the player with the blood moon you decide when you're gonna gonna cast the blood moon so usually then it doesn't backfire although that could happen we do see of course that extra basic blue uh, land in his sideboard so i guess when he boards in his uh, blood moons he is going to board in that extra blue mana as well i always like it when you kind of see players having having an having a plan with the blood moon like sometimes when i see including some of my lists where i see okay you've got a blood moon in the side but it's really going to hurt you as well but probably then your philosophy is it's going to hurt my opponent more and yes, sometimes that's true, but sometimes that can really backfire. So I like it when you kind of, in this case, have that extra basic in there to make that transition not perfect, but a little bit more smooth, uh, smoother. Anyway, this is the deck of Oliver. Now let's take a look at the deck of his opponent. And here we see the deck of Alex, so another troll disco deck. We've seen quite a few here at Vienna Geddon, and it's kind of nice because I felt like in the Netherlands sometimes that... Troll Disco is a little bit on the side burner. It's still being played, but not as often. So it's nice to see to see it really, really be one of the one of the big main decks here at this tournament. And of course, it, it all revolves around the Setch Troll and the Nevenerals disc. Setch Troll, a two-two creature for one red and two, but it becomes a three-three when you control a swamp, and you can regenerate it for one black. So basically, it's a three-three with regeneration for three mana, which is a great deal. Um, and then you have your Nevenerals Disc, which is four to cast an artifact, comes into play tap. When it untaps, you can pay one. It destroys all artifacts in shamans and creatures. And because it says destroys, you can regenerate your creatures with regeneration, of course. So you can regenerate your setches. Also goes together with uh, Mishra's Factory really well because the disc doesn't destroy the lands. So if you time it right, you can kind of clear the battlefield and you have your setches left and you have your factories left, which is quite nice. Now then when we see uh, the rest of the deck, he is playing, of course, with Blue Power. Then he's playing with Burn. We see four Lightning Bolts. Uh, one fireball and also I find this quite nice one stone rain I think it's good to include the stone rain here because in in Swedish old school there are so many good lands you've got of course Loa but I mean you also have the factories you want to deal with factories is great against the disc then you've got those mazes of if and of course when somebody has kind of a greedy mana base you know that stone rain can really help you so I'm liking the inclusion of this one stone rain and I'm curious to see how important it, it is going to be um, and then interesting, he's decided to play with only one Shatter main. So where we saw the list of Oliver who went with two Shatters, Alex has made another decision. Just play with one Shatter and maybe make that uh, that uh, available slot ready for your Stone Rain. So it's interesting to see. And these are the little choices that I'm talking about. These are choices I'm interested in when we kind of go into that quarterfinals. Because, you know, decks seem to look alike more, which is, which is understandable because you're playing with the 5% of good cards in the 93 94 pool um, but it also means that you know it's all about those little decisions those are the decisions that can make a difference and of course the luck of the draw which is still still a thing in magic of course um, and then we're seeing a, a play set of counter spells there on the left top corner again here where we see oliver playing with two counter spells uh, alex has made the decision to go with the full four and with the mana drain, so basically playing with five counter spells. And of course, um, the card that I discuss discussed in the intro already, he is playing with one Sheevan Dragon, and I like that. I think it's really cool in a deck to have like one top end, like a single one. I, for example, in my mono blue, I always play my one Mahamoti, and it's been really good on several times, like later in the game. I mean, that can be quite decisive. Like if you time that right, you're like, whoa, where did that creature come from? And it can really be a problem. So I'm I'm hoping, Alex, that you get to cast your beautiful Shivan Dragon. That would be just fantastic. And he's also playing with uh, with two Suchis, by the way. So yeah, it's, it's looking like a strong list. And if I have to pick a favorite, I, I don't really can, to be honest. Um, I, I think the biggest plus for both players is that there's no white. You know, like uh, Disenchant, of course, is difficult for a robots deck. Uh, Swords is really difficult for the Setch deck. 
I think after main board, maybe Oliver is a slight favorite because he's going to board in the Abyss and he's going to board in uh, probably Terrors. So that could that could help him. But yeah, I don't I don't know. I could really see the coin flip either way. I can really see Alex winning it here well uh, as well with his uh, with his Sedge deck. So. You know, for me, it's a 50-50. Uh, let me know in the comments below who your favorite is and also why it is your favorite. Always interested to hear from you. Anyway, uh, this is the deck of Alex. We looked at the deck of Oliver and that only means one thing. We are ready for the quarterfinals of Vienna Geddon 2024. Here we go. Game number one here of the quarterfinals at Vienna again. And look at that. Alex taking a mulligan. He's the player who's playing with the set troll deck. And on the left, on the play here is Oliver. He's playing uh, robots. So mainly uh, red and blue, also a little bit of black. Let's see what Alex can do here. There's a Batlands, a Mox Sapphire, and there's a Soul Ring. So both players really ramping up here. There's a Shatter. I wonder if he's going to fire off the Shatter on, because he can do that with the Felwer Stone. He could fire it off on, of course, the Sapphire or the, uh, the Soul Ring. That's going to be an interesting decision for him. It looks like he is thinking about using the Shatter here. Or does he have other options? Maybe a Suchi for four. Can't really see if he has that in hand. I do see a trike there, I believe, and a shatter. Those are the two cards I can identify. Looks like he's got some interesting options already. Yeah, that's a trike. Is that a mana vault? Hard to spot. You see Oliver really here contemplating. Used to be a professional magic player, by the way. So, I mean, this, this guy can play cards. So, going through the motion. Tapping their Volcanic. Okay, yeah, it is a Mana Vault. Tapping six. Are we going to see Trike? There's the Trike hitting the table. So he's probably thinking, right, okay, Alex cannot counter yet. So this is my moment. And of course, if Alex has, for example, a disc here, could consider also playing that disc out. Of course, then you're going to blow up your Soul Ring and, uh, and Sapphire next turn, but it would also blow up a lot on the side of Oliver. And remember, Alex is only playing with one Shatter main. Tapping four here, I believe. Yep, so there's the disc. Comes into play tapped, of course. Yeah, and that Mana Vault here stays tapped. So Oliver dropping to 19. Hopefully they're going to use uh, the dice as well to track their lives. There is another factory. So going to animate the factory. Yes, yeah, swinging. He can deal seven damage here. That's quite a blow. Or are we going to see, for example, a bolt here by Alex? It looks like we're not. See, he's going to deal seven points of damage. Going to drop to 13. I mean, ooh, it can go quickly. Oh, and there's that shatter, of course, that he still has. Still had that shatter in hand. So, I mean, Oliver definitely made the right decision here. It must have been tempting for him to go shatter, soaring, and then pass turn and player. Perhaps your try could turn later, but this uh, is really working out here for Oliver. And, and Alex is already in trouble. I mean, how long are we playing this game? One minute? Tapping everything out for a Brain Geyser. The problem for Alex here, yes, of course, it's great. You're drawing a lot of cards, but it's going to take you another turn. That means that next turn, you could get eight points uh, of damage, meaning you're on five. Remember, the trike has three counters on it, can take that off. So basically, you're on two life now, which is a huge problem. There's another trike. He does need to take the damage, by the way, from the Vault. So Oliver is on 18. But look at this. Alex on 5. That is a big problem. Alex on 5 here. And I believe that's a trike in hand there for, uh, for Oliver. So he can just take the counter stuff from the trike, put Alex on 2, then play his trike, win the game here. This is going to be super tough for Alex. To be honest, I don't really see a way out of out of this situation for Alex. And this game went so fast. And I think a crucial decision here was that moment where Oliver decided to go for the Triskelion instead of the Shatter play. That was the moment. There we do see a Shatter, of course, going to take the counters off, going to put him on two. I mean, that's the thing. It feels so bad to remove a trike because you still take damage. Or worse, you know, he, he, he shoots some creatures down. It's it's always bad. Okay, so here we see the Chaos Orb. So, I mean, I'm liking this from Alex because he can actually, if Oliver wouldn't have the trike, you know, he could actually survive. As a matter of fact, I think he's buying himself another turn here. Has to has to hit, though. Okay, that's a good, a good flip. 
So that one's gone. And Alex is doing everything he can, and I'm liking it. So another damage here, I assume, from the Vault. That would mean Oliver is going to drop to 17. And now he's got five. Is he thinking about maybe untapping the Vault here? So that next turn, yeah, the next turn he has to guarantee. So he's going to stay on 18. Next turn he has to guarantee that he can cast that Triskelion. Oh, there's a Bolt, though, from the top. It's already over. Doesn't even need to wait for it. Yeah, there was... Alex, there was nothing you could do. Like I said, I think the decision here of this match, game one, because this is just game one, not the match yet, but that in game one that Oliver made that decision not to shatter, but, you know, go for the Volt play, go for the aggressive play, go for the trike. Anyway, both players are now going to sideboard, and we will catch back up with them in game number two. Game number two, here we go. So uh, Alex on the play now. And let's hope that we get an exciting game too. There's a Volcanic Island and a pass. So a bit of a slower start for Alex here. And uh, there's a Underground Sea by Oliver. So also kind of a slower start. Look at that in the upkeep. Look at that. Oh man, playing Ancestral Recall in the upkeep. Come on, Alex, you can do it. There's an Underground Sea. So two cards for him. Nothing cast, though. Passing the turn. There is a uh, City of Brass taking a damage. Going to drop to 19. And, oh, there's a Time Walk. Man, Oliver is really hitting it big here in the quarterfinals. And Alex, uh, well, not with his back against the wall, I guess, but already kind of in a bad decision. But does he have lands? That's the question. Going to tap two. So going to drop to 18. It looks like he's now using the dice. There's a Demonic. Okay, so there's that Demonic Tutor. Oh, there's a Mana Drain. Yeah, this is nice. I'm a little bit on Team Alex now because I'm really... I, I just want to see more matches between these two decks. So I'm happy with this Mana Drain. So two extra mana for Alex here. There's a Suchi. Okay, some pressure. I do believe we see a uh, Shatter in hand there for Oliver. He is on 18, by the way, not on 19. And uh, there's a Shatter. So now he's going to drop to 17. I'm just going to keep the score for you guys. I'll keep you up to date. Oh, yeah. Now he's changing. Thank you. Oh, he's actually on 16. Was I doing? Okay, he's on 17. I'm like, am I doing a bad job? The thing is, they're keeping the scores themselves on paper as well. But, of course, it's nice for us to, uh, to see the scores on the dice. There's a Mishra's Factory and a Pass. So at least Alex has the mana. Okay, found the Volcanic. Because Oliver's kind of stumbling. So hopefully those few stumbles can, uh, can get Alex some advantage. Of course, uh, Oliver does have the card advantage with that Resolved Ancestral Recall and being on the draw. Yeah, he's going to go aggro. He's going to go in there into the red zone. And uh, I'm kind of expecting, yeah, Shatter or Bolt. Or in this case, it's a Shatter here taking care of the Factory. There's a pass by Alex. Ah, oh, that's bad. That's bad. So also missing a land drop, not putting any extra pressure on. And kind of attacking for two kind of showed a little desperation, in my opinion. Because ideally, you don't want to be forced to do, to do that. So three. Okay, there's another land. Land number four. Are we going to see, for example, a Nevenerals disc? Maybe Alex is keeping the discs in hand. That can be the case as well, of course. You know, knowing that Oliver probably... Uh, you know, he's playing with all sorts of counter magic. So he's going to tap two. Okay, there is a Chaos Orb. And I mean, this is ideal, right? If you're, if you're Oliver. Because you can just play, play out your Chaos Orb, keep your counter mana open, and just, you know, pass turn. You go ahead, Alex. You do your, you do your thing. I'll counter it away if it's too dangerous. And of course, talking about counter battles, um, I know that for sure Oliver has boarded in those. Hey, we can see it in his hand, those red elemental blasts. I wonder if Alex has done the same. There we see uh, a demonic tutor. I wonder if this is going to resolve. And we do see a counter spirit. That does mean two more damage. So it's going to drop to 15. And there goes the demonic. So, I mean, a reason to counter a demonic is you could be worried that, um, you know, Alex is going to look up things that cannot be countered. Like, for example, a strip mine or a library of Alexandria or another Mishra's factory. So that could be the reason to counter it. And I think actually looking up one of those lands wouldn't, it, wouldn't be that bad for Alex because he, he does have mana issues at the moment. 
So this counter spell is probably a good decision. And Alex a little bit in the tank here. Just passing the turn, being patient. Probably Alex has some counter magic in hand himself as well. Talking about that, we see Oliver drawing into a mana drain. So both players kind of having a lot of answers in hand. We do see that one Suchi, but I mean, you don't want to tap out here on this board. And of course, Oliver, as a, a former professional magic player, knows that. And we see Alex here dropping the Mistress Factory. And I believe both players know each other quite well. They're from the, the local scene here in Vienna. Okay, there we see a Black Lotus. Are we going to see some fireworks? Because that Black Lotus is probably going to allow you to play something out with counter backup. Now remember, Oliver has so much counter magic. Anyway, he's going to sack here. Six mana. Oh, Shivan Dragon. I'm loving it. Shivan Dragon. I'm afraid for the counter spell though. Oh, mana drain. I'm expecting a counter on the drain, but then a red elemental blast. That's what I think is going to happen. There is the counter spell. Oh, no. Oh, this hurts. This hurts so bad. I wanted to see that Shivan. I wanted to see the Shivan. Oh, don't get me wrong, Oliver. You're a nice guy, man. We had some drinks. You know that. But I'm just really rooting for Alex here in game two. But oh, it's not meant to be, it seems. And yeah, now, of course, he can cast this very cheaply. Look at that. Of course, he got six mana from the mana drain using it br brilliantly here. But playing the Suchi for four, having two mana left, tapping the two blue and the double copy artifact. Three Suchis now on the board. And man, if you're Alex, you're like, this is just not my day or at least not my top eight quarterfinal match playing the uh, mox sapphire here yeah this is tough here for alex i think alex after this you need to go to the bar just go to the bar i mean you haven't lost yet okay there's a shatter that's a start playing a shatter i mean probably you boarded in a lot of artifact hate after uh, after the first match because the thing is okay robots is a a tier one deck but People expect the robots deck. So they have a plan for it when it's there. Look at this, a time twister. I think we're going to see a counter spell, but I hope not. Yeah, red elemental blast. Oh, blue elemental blast. I love it. Is it going to resolve? I think it is. Yes, it's going to resolve. Okay. I mean, Alex is still in a bad spot, but at least this resolves. And who knows? Maybe Oliver's only going to draw like mana sources. I've seen weirder things happen and maybe, you know, Alex draws the nuts. It is possible. So both players here are uh, gonna, gonna shuffle up and draw a fresh seven. But yeah, Oliver of course still has and the double Suchi and he has that uh, Chaos Orb there. So it's, uh, it's far from ideal. Yeah, and you can see Alex there kind of knocking on the table Hoping for the best. Going to draw seven. But that looks like a hand. Oh, did, did I see a Library of Alexandria in Oliver's hand? Are you kidding me? Um, Alex, uh, you need something really good. We cannot really see Alex's hand, unfortunately. But he doesn't. Did he already have a land drop? There's a low. Uh, I mean, come on. This is just swinging in for eight. Alex dropping to 12. I mean, the only silver lining I can think of here for Alex is that at least he cannot blame anything. He cannot blame himself after these two games because there's I haven't seen a single opening for him here in this match. There's another copy, and this shows how good copy artifact is. He now has three Suchis again. Oh, man, he's got trikes in hand, counterspell in hand. He's got everything. There's a maze. Okay, that can stop one of the Suchis. That's probably going to buy him one more turn, although, of course, Oliver can flip. I mean, I don't know if he's going to, but that could be an option on end step. Okay, is that a time walk, perhaps? Okay, that's a time walk. Going to take an extra turn. And I'm liking this from Oliver that he's not countering the time walk. He's saying, you know what, you go. You go get your turn. I'm going to focus on what can, can get you back in the game. That's what I'm going to counter. And this extra turn, that's fine. Then we see a Chaos Orb. So, I mean, the hand of Alex wasn't bad at all. It was a pretty good hand. There we see Oliver making that uh, gesture. Yo, can continue playing. It's fine. I'll allow it. Oh, man. Come on, Alex. Another maze. Okay, okay, okay. We've got something cooking. Can stop two Suchis now. 
has a mana drain in hand there. Oh man, I'm liking this. Is he gonna get back from this? That would be like a miracle. I thought he was dead and buried, but look at him go now. Gonna play a Brain Geyser for three. Hoping that it's gonna resolve. There we see uh, Oliver writing down Suchi. And there we see a counterspell. Yeah, yeah, that's unfortunate. And I think I understand this play, um, you know, this play by Alex, because when you're with your back against the wall, you have to take some risks. And I mean, he kept playing out cards where he thought maybe he's going to counter, you know, Time Walk. Um, then, of course, he played the Chaos Orb. And every time Oliver allowed it, and then you try then to go for that uh, Brain Geyser move. There's the attack for 12, sending two Suchis back. So it's going to take four, probably drop to eight. And I believe that Oliver, I mean, he's not on 17. I believe he's a little bit lower, but it's not relevant at the moment. Yeah, of course, another Suchi. And there are Black Lotus, another Suchi. <laughs> so many Suchis. This is the moment where you think, I wish I was playing white just for the balance. You know, this is, this is the balance moment. This is the moment. But um, yeah, we're not going to see balance. Oh, 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 Alex. I have, again, Alex, I got to compliment you on the fact that you got another turn out of this. Actually, two turns with the time walk if we, if we count that as well. So you got two extra turns out of it. But it looks like it's really the end of the road here now for you. Five Suchis. I mean, that is tough. That is really tough. He does have the mace, could block one on the mace, could jump, send two back, but then he would still take eight. So he can stop three, but that's not even enough. Five cards in hand there. I can see Counterspell. I can see, I, bl I believe, uh, Blue Elemental Blast. And of course, Blue Elemental Blast is great against the Red Elemental Blast, but now it's kind of use useless for Alex. I mean, yeah, I mean, he's probably saying, you know, if I flip, you flip in response. So that's not going to help. Yeah, showing his hand here. Oh, doesn't have the two red for the Shatterstorm. That would have been a great move, but doesn't have the two red for the Shatterstorm. Ay, 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 that's unfortunate. I mean, did he, did Oliver, did you still have a counterspell in hand? I'm not sure. I don't think so. That Shatterstorm would have been, would have been brilliant, but didn't have the second red for it. Yeah. That's the thing with Shatterstorm, you do need to have two red. Oh, what if that card would just be one red and three? That would be cool, kind of like a tsunami casting cost. That would be quite nice. Um, anyway, this was the quarterfinals here at Vienna, getting a very short match. I think my deck decks took longer than the match, but still, I liked it. It's, uh, it's great to see these decks in action, these top tier decks uh, going face to face. And the good news is we also have a semifinals and a finals coming up, and perhaps we're gonna see more of Oliver's decks in those episodes now if you don't want to miss a thing make sure to hit that subscribe button and ring that bell okay and before you go uh, please also consider to uh, share this video comment on this video and like this video all these things are free and really help the channel move forward and then there's one last thing that you can do and that is become a patron of the show check out patreon.com slash timmy talks to find out how you can help me to continue making this for you these episodes for you these old school magic matches and uh, i just want to thank the patrons because the patrons are the main reason that I keep, you know, making the videos, the support that I get from you guys is amazing. And also it, it gives me the funding that I need to also go to these tournaments, record these matches, comment on these matches. Just, just you know, it, 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 keeps, it keeps the channel alive. So thank you so much if you're already a patron. And if not, please consider becoming one. Again, check out patreon.com slash Timmy Talks. And uh, talking about the patrons, let's go to the end scroll. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? Where lie in the morning? Way day out she rises, way day out she rises, way day out she rises, her lie in the morning. Put him in the long water till he's sober, put him in the long water till he's sober, put him in the long water till he's sober, put him in the long water till he's sober, put him in the long water till he's sober, put him in the long water till he's sober.
Petrus Fingertus Somber Kazik.